In this video, we're going to have a look at how you can use the format strings to change how your values are displayed within your reports. I want to show you how you can apply this to your different data types like numbers, percentages, dates, and times. And we're also going to look at the different variations of the format strings that you would typically use on a daily basis. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So since the Power BI team has introduced this new feature, the dynamic format strings, it's opened up a number of different opportunities in which we can display our data. Now there's always been this format function which allowed us to change the format strings of a sort of our columns. This new addition, the dynamic format strings, sort of changed and has given us some more opportunities in how we can apply that into our columns. So let me show you. So here we are in my demo at the moment. I have two different tables here, numbers and dates. I'm just gonna zoom in on them quite like this. So I've put them in two separate tables here, but at the back end, it's basically just a table with two different columns. And I just wanted to show this so that we can go through the different variations of the format strings. So how you would typically approach this, um, so at the moment, and uh, we're going to start with the numbers. I'm going to name this number formatted. And then we'll just take the, the value from the numbers. So we'll use get the numbers here. We drag it here on our table. As you can see, it's taken the kind of typical general formatting that we would expect with a number. So we'll take the negative values, it will add decimals if it needs to, which is what you would expect from a sort of number type column. Now, if we wrap it with a format like this, so format, uh, actually we, we missed the IntelliSense there. So it needs two uh, parameters by default. It needs the value, the expression that you want to format, in which case it's basically just this number that we want. And then the second bit is the format string, which is actually what we're going to dive deeper into today. So we're going to leave it as blank here right now. And as you can see, what it's done is it's remove all of those formattings that it's applied uh, automatically. So it's removed those decimal points where they're not available. And it's basically converted this column into a text column instead of a number. We'll come back to that in a second. So what you'll notice, if I change and add a zero over there, you'll see that it changes it even further. So what it did, what it's done is it's removed any decimal elements that uh, we have, even if there is a value in those decimals. So 0 0.32, for example, has been converted into just zero. And that's because we didn't specify in our format string that we want decimals. If you want to show decimals, you need to use a point and then a value at the end of that decimal, or you can just leave it blank. Key thing is you need to use the point. So if we hit enter now, 0.0, .0 it will give you the value decimal and the first decimal point in that number. So as you notice, it's given us zeros, for example, even if there is no decimal value apart from zero there. So it would make sense to just put zero. It will just put one decimal point there. Any values um, that has two decimal points um, gets rounded up. So 10.26, for, for example, gets rounded up into 10.3. So that's what this format string does. So before we continue with this demo, I want to just talk a little bit about the format string. So what it's done basically in our measure here, is it's converted the results that uh, we are seeing here into a text column. And in some cases that can be detrimental. And that's because if you look at, for example, if you wanted to sort this table, now you can sort it by the numbers here, which because it hasn't changed, is still sorting in the right, right order. Whereas now with this formatted column that we've just created, since it's been converted into a text column, so the values here are basically not text, not numbers, they are text. If you try to sort them, it's not correct anymore. So as you can see, it's giving us some weird sorting. That's because it's sorting it by character, not by number. So while the format function does that, the dynamic format strings don't. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to continue looking at the format strings, but I'm going to move it into the dynamic format string. So we're going to go back and change it into just the sum like this. And then we're going to go to format. 
and then change it into a dynamic. So now here we are. So we are now in the format string, which if we add the 0.0, .0 we are back to where we were. But the difference is now, if you sort it, you'll see that um, it honors the actual number of values. And so it's still sorting in the right order as you would expect on basically a number column. So let's continue with this demo then. So I'm going to just zoom in a little bit in this here. So let's add a few zeros. So let's add two decimal points here. We'll add two zeros. And what that does is it forces to add two digits, two decimal points after the dot here, even if it doesn't exist. So as you add more zero, it will add more zeros there, even if there's no value there. Same thing if you add it here at the front, you'll see that 0 0.32 will add 0, 0 0.320. And that's because we are forcing to add a digit there by adding the zero here in our format string. If you want to show the value and add the value, if there is a non-zero value in that decimal point, you can use this hash. So what it will do, so instead of 0, 0, 0.000, zero let's replace it with a hash instead so hash dot hash so you'll see the difference here what it does is it adds a decimal point if there is a value after that decimal point so 0 0.32 for example adds dot 0.3 whereas 2 there is 0 there in our first decimal point that's why it's just giving us 2 0 0.32 although there is a value in that second decimal point it doesn't show that I mean that's because we've only specified one hash here if we add another hash that will solve your problem. So you might want to show the second decimal value, um, but you'll see that two doesn't change. And that's because both the first and second decimal points there are zeros. If you want to add commas within your numbers, so basically, like you can see here, one, two, four, three, you want to add that comma in between those thousand separators, you can simply just add a comma instead of a, a dot. So like this. So if you add it like that, you'll see that you add that comma on those thousand separators quite easily. So if you want to abbreviate your values, like for example, instead of showing one, two, four, three, you want to show one K instead, I think you can just replace and remove this and just add K here at the end. I believe perhaps just like this. So here we go. So if you add a comma and a dot, that will abbreviate that value into thousands. And as you can see, um, it's given us 1K here. That's 1.2K. If you wanted to add 1.2K, you need to add another hash here, which will give you 1.2K. Now, as you can see here, there are some values that are empty. If you wanted to correct that, you want to make sure that the front part is instead of hash, which these will be 0K, obviously, because they are below 1,000. You want to force a value there, so you should show at least a 0K. So that will fix your, your presentation right here. If you want to show and abbreviate it into something higher, like, for example, to millions, all you need to do is add more commas. So two commas means that it's millions, and you can just change the suffix as well. So it will adjust it to millions, 1.5 million, for example, and billion, basically just add another comma and then change the suffix to billion. So pretty simple, right? To convert your numbers into percentages, it's actually pretty simple as well. So all you need to do is to use the percentage sign, which will convert your value into percentage. So it doesn't make sense in a lot of it, but 0.32, for example, is converted into 32%, which is exactly what kind of we expect. So you've already seen how we added a suffix into the thousands, like adding Ks or Ms or Bs. You can also add a prefix to your, your values. So for example, if you wanted to show currencies, so for example, we want to show these values as British pounds. What we can do is add that symbol at the front and then we'll just do our normal normal calculation. So something like this. So we'll just leave it like that. As you can see, it's showing you the pound sign and then the value. So probably in this case, it makes sense if we use a zero hash dot hash which will give us a sort of a correct looking visual display of our currencies. Along with this, you can also control how your numbers are formatted by adding semicolons and adding some alternative values based on if your values are positive, negative, or if they're zero. So 
they are all optional, but I'm going to show you an example how to deal with negatives. So in accounting, normally you would see the negative values to be wrapped with these parentheses instead, instead of having this negative value here at the front. So what we want to do, if we want to have that kind of formatting, we'll just copy this. We'll add a semicolon after this, add two parentheses, open and close, and like that. So what it will do, so this is the, the format that it will use if it's positive. If it's negative, it will use this after the semicolon. If you hit enter, you'll see that that negative value has changed from having the minus sign into the parentheses. If you have values such as zero, for example, you can also customize it here with a semicolon. So instead of showing zero pounds here, we want to say the word zero. So if we add another semicolon, we'll just type the word zero like this. And what it will do is it will give us zero here in our value. So that pretty much covers the typical format strings that you would want to use if you're using uh, in, in sort of numbers. Now let's move on to dates. Now with the dates, you can't really use dynamic format strings with them as of right now. So we're going to go back to using format strings. The, the format function is what I mean. So I'm going to move this here and I'm going to create a new measure for our date. I'm going to name it uh, date formatted and then we're going to uh, get the max of the dates like this drag it here in our table and then we'll wrap it with a format function so first second format we'll just leave it as zero right now so it will just give us the value as it is so what we've just done there is um, we've added a format string and it's just given us the kind of epoch value of those dates. Now, if you change this to um, date, let's say month, year like this, it will give you the date, the month, the date, the month and the year of that of that date row. Now, so there are many ways that you can kind of format the dates and we're going to go through the typical ways that you would want to um, show these. But a big clue of what the other types of format strings that you can use is here in the format dropdown. So the one that we've just done is one of it's basically one of these uh, variations. So date, month, year, the values that are in between these parentheses is the format string and the sample of how it would look like is here. So this is what you can use as your sort of template of how you can get certain you can format your your dates into something else, right? So now you've just seen that, let's uh, convert this into date, month, year like this. So this is a typical way that we would show dates in the UK. So as you can see, what it's done is what we have given it dates, the days, the month and the year. And we've added these slashes as our separators in between. The separators themselves is something that we define, but that can simply be anything. So you can change it into a dash like this. Or as you saw earlier, you can just simply just have a space in between. I mean, it doesn't really matter. So the year at the moment, we're using four Y's, which gives us the full year. But if you wanted to, you can just show us two Y's and it will just give you the abbreviated version of that year. Month at the moment is just giving us the numerical value. So uh, it gives us 0, 06, 12, 0, 01. If you wanted to just show the month number, without and omitting that those zeros. So if it's just six instead of zero six, it will show six. If it's one, it just shows one, not zero one. If you wanted to see an abbreviated version of that month, you can use the three M's, which will give you like the actual word, the name of that month in a three letter format. So June, December, January, like this. If you use four M's, that will give you the full name of that month. So quite simple. So days here, like the month, we're using it to show kind of two digits of the day. If you use just one D, it will obviously omit those zeros at the front. If you use three Ds, what it will do is it will give you the day of the week. So Thursday, Monday, Saturday, which is handy if you want to show the day of the week, basically along with your date. So the, that's the abbreviated version. If you use four Ds, it will just give you the full name of that day of week. If you want to show a quarters, for example, if we just remove that, you can just use Q 
which will give you the quarter number within that year. So which which quarter it belongs to. I mean, if you combine that with the year, it will give you a quarter, which quarter and then for which year. Now, if you want to show the Q in front of this quarter number, you can use this forward slash Q, which will create a string literal uh, before our Q. So that will add a Q 2019 here formatted to what we need. And that's it. So there are a lot more different types of kind of format strings that you can explore. For today, I've only covered the ones that I typically use on a regular basis, which I hope is something that it would be useful for you to as well. Now that you know how to use format strings, I invite you to check out my previous videos covering the full length breadth of what you can use uh, dynamic format strings for, such so as changing the different uh, units of your displays, as well as changing different currencies based on your certain rules and measures. Go check out that video so that you can learn more about how you can take this feature to the next level. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so in order to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.